Hey there, welcome to Professor Pearl, a YouTube channel about knitting and other crafts. I'm Nicole, and today I'm going to talk about preparing for the Love Note Love Knit Along. So when I prepare for any project that I'm about to start, I always gauge, gauge swatch and I always get my pattern ready. Those are my two main things. Of course, there's other things maybe embedded in there like winding up my yarn, measuring my body and things, but when I think about getting ready to knit my sweater, I think about getting my pattern ready and gauge swatching. Now, when I say get my pattern ready, that can be different for different people. So for me, I like to print off my, my pattern on paper and put it in a plastic sleeve and I reuse these plastic sleeves in my teaching and things like this and like this one actually came from some I was just cleaning out my office and I used to be a high school math teacher and I just kind of recycled some of those things and I took a bunch of the plastic sleeves I used from like 2005 and brought them home <laughs> and so this is I'm reusing it to be a little bit more green but I like to use my paper patterns printed off because I do like the physical aspect of it. And also I knit around my three-year-old daughter a lot and sometimes she's playing and I'm sitting on the floor knitting. And it's just for minimizing my screen time around her. It's just for me easier to have a, a pattern to look at instead of a screen or something like this. So once I print it off and put it in a plastic sleeve, I also We'll grab some washi tape and put that on the back. And the, well, for this particular pattern, I do this. Or any color work sweater or anything with lace. Anything that has a chart, I put the washi tape on there. So then when I get to the charted part of the pattern, I will flip it around so the chart will be back here. And then I can use this to go row by row because this Washi tape is essentially like a paper tape that like feels. I can just move it and it keeps where I'm at. So that's how I step one. Then I'll sit down usually with my midliners, which are, if you are not familiar with a midliner, oh, it's not focusing. I think I'm an official YouTuber because I'm having focusing issues. <laughs> I, nonetheless, you can search in Google or Amazon what a midliner is. They're a highlighter, but <laughs> they're my favorite kind of highlighter for knitting patterns because they are more of a pastel and a bright. And the reason why I have two here is I can't remember what I've already highlighted in the pattern. So this is not the first time that I've knit a love note. I've knit three love notes in a size medium and a size large. And the next love note I'm going to make is going to be for my three-year-old daughter. And so I just grabbed two highlighters from my office so I could see hopefully a different color than what I've already used. It looks like I've used a lime green before and these are purple and teal so that will be great. And so the sizes for child they go 0 to 6 months, 6 to 12, 1 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to 6. I'm definitely going to knit the 4 to 6 year old size. It says that it is a 30.5 inch circumference and that would give I wrote down Matilda's measurements I should go check it but I think that would give her quite a bit of positive ease she tends to wear a child size five or six now even though she's three but I think I think that she would have the four to six size so I'm just going to mark that and then go check her measurements I have written down to make sure that that it okay I found where I have her measurements written down her chest is a 21.75 inch circumference and her belly is a 22 
So if I knit the size four to six, that would give her about 10 inches of positive ease, which is a lot of positive ease, but that will mean that it'll be big on her. And I'm actually really okay with that. Um, even though I know that that's a lot of positive ease, I knit her a little boxy sweater before and it had quite a bit of positive ease on it and it's lasted her two years. And so I think I'm gonna still do the size four to six, even though that's like almost 10 inches of positive ease. And the pattern for adults suggests, is, suggests quite a wide range of positives. If you purchase a pattern, you can read that. But the models on the picture, like models pictured in the love note, they wore them with different amounts of positives. So I think here, this picture is Nina and she's wearing it with 7.5 inches of positives. And I think there's another picture. Amy, and she's wearing it with 10 inches of positives. Even though the adults are wearing it with 10 inches of positives, like proportionally, that would mean 10 inches of positives would be quite a bit more than on, than on an adult. But I do think the four to six year old size is is a good choice. Now, this happened to me, the same struggle when I was choosing my own size. I was struggling about whether I should do a size medium or a large. And so what I actually did is highlighted both and made the decision after swatching. And so that's another option and a great reason to bring two with you as well. What I do then is just go through and highlight the numbers through the entire pattern that match that size. Go and highlight the entire pattern with the size that I might be interested in. It doesn't mean that I'm always necessarily going to end up knitting that size. When I gauge swatch, decisions will be made and I may do that size I've highlighted or I may go through and highlight it again. So like what's sort of the purpose in doing that? I think it just sort of mentally prepares me honestly and makes me sort of look at the pattern. I remember when I started knitting sweaters, somebody recommended to me that I should read the whole pattern through and I just didn't do that. And things worked out. <laughs> I do think though it is helpful. It can be also a vice to read all the way through. You might think, oh, I can't do this when it just takes one stitch one row at a time. But reading all the way through can be really helpful to help you mentally prepare about what's coming up, what you might think about and of course if you alter the pattern things you might want to alter so i like to go through and just sort of do that first and that also helps me decide on how much yardage i want or like check my yarn like do i think i have enough is this worth swatching for or do i need to buy new yarn or do i need to pick something else out of my stash so that's what i do first then i start gauge swatching some people like to not gauge swatch and kind of live life on the edge, but I think it's really important to gauge swatch to one, make sure that you know it's going to be a size that's going to fit you, but also two, to make sure that it's going to be a fabric that you like as well. So, and I pulled out some of my old gauge swatches so I could show that to you as well. I also think it's important to gauge swatch in the same way that you're going to knit the sweater. So if you're going to use wooden needles to knit your sweater, you should gauge swatch with wooden needles. If you're knitting the sweater in the round, you should gauge swatch in the round. If you're knitting the sweater flat, you should gauge swatch flat. Because you really, your purl stitches could be different from your knit stitches, your tension could be different in those different ways. So I think it's important to Consider that when you're gauge swatching. And you might think, well, I 
oh, isn't it to gauge? And I've heard people say that, or you might think, I, I don't, the fabric will work out the way it's going to work out. But if you get, plan on getting your fabric wet at all, like washing it or soaking it in a, like a wool wash and then laying it out to dry, like the fabric's going to change from when you knit it. And so the question is, is after you wash it or wet block it, is it still the garment that you want? Is it still gonna fit? Is the fabric still something you're interested in? So that's why I think it's important to gauge swatch and block your gauge swatch. So I've knit three love notes. I couldn't find my gauge swatch for my one of my love notes, but I found some gauge swatches for my other love notes. So I knit one without lace. A slowy one and my first one I remember I knit several gauge swatches and you might be thinking why are there these little ends out here <laughs> and there's these little ends out here because I gauge swatched in the round which which I'll show you uh, how to do that here later in the video but I wanted to gauge watching the round so basically I carried my yarn in the back and then when I was done I snipped the yarn and then I blocked wet blocked it and then did the math to see how it would fit. Now I have received some like comments on Instagram that you don't necessarily need to cut your the back of this gauge swatch. You don't I suppose but I like to because I want it to like block out and I want to be able to count those stitches nicely and I want it, if it's going to be a yarn that's going to grow, either row or width, mo I, I would want to know like what that looks like so that's why I do cut the yarn on the back which again I'll show you how to do that but and I'll show you how to measure your gauge swatch. Um, okay so what I did want to say is I remember when I knit this. I knew that I'm a generally loose knitter so when it required it says six millimeter or ten US I I think I went down immediately two needle sizes. And you can see like you can almost see me behind it. <laughs> and I think that that is very drapey and beautiful and somebody might want to might like this fabric. But for me I really thought this was too loose so I did not really care for this fabric as much. So even though I had already gone down two needle sizes, what I did next, since this was too loose, is I went down three needle sizes and then I did this, this gauge swatch here. And I could tell that the knit stitches were closer together, it's harder to see me through this, and I just, I knew that this was the right, the right one for me. And it also matched the gauge. I think each of the times I have knit the love note. I have not gotten row gauge. I've only gotten stitch gauge. So that may happen to you. So I didn't want to take a chance and just sort of chat about row gauge versus stitch gauge. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm making some knit stitches on a piece of paper. I wasn't intending on doing this actually <laughs> with a visual, but now I'm feeling like I should. Okay. So let's see if this shows up. I made some V's on my little piece of paper here. Imagine those V's are knit stitches. So this is the bottom of your garment, this is the top of your garment. That would be just four stitches and two rows. <laughs> it's a very small garment. So for stitch gauge, basically you're going to be measuring across and how many stitches fit into a certain amount of linear measurement is the stitch gauge, like how much is getting in this, how much, how many stitches are fit, fitting in that linear measurement. So that's what I mean by stitch gauge. Row gauge is how tall those stitches are. And for me, the 
stitch gauge matters more than the row gauge. And the reason being is for the row gauge, which is affects the length of the garment, I can either knit more or knit less, and I can try it on, particularly for the love note, because it's a pullover. So for me, it's important to get that, but not as much. But the stitch gauge, that matters the most to me for this garment because it's the circumference, like how much is around, and I can't really tweak that. You can, you can knit two together, things like this, but like you might as well just sort of get it right when you can get it right. So uh, yeah, so when I show you later on how to measure your gauge swatches, the, the stitch gauge matters more than the row gauge to me. And so those are the two things I do to prepare. And so since August, I mean, not August, oh goodness, October 1st is on its way and I'm getting excited to cast on my fourth love note. And so that, that's how I'm preparing. That's what I'm doing today. I actually was just doing this on my own. I thought, I'll just grab a camera and maybe record this really quick in case you're interested in how I'm preparing for the love note love knit along so hopefully i'll include some other video clip footage here next of like how i measure my gauge swatches and also maybe how i make a gauge swatch as well all right i'm going to show you how to swatch in the round which i already have started here so i'm using a fingering and a mohair i'm holding those together for my love note well, actually for Matilda's love note. <laughs> and I've started my swatch. There's no directions in most patterns on like how many to cast on and how I decide how many I'm gonna cast on is by seeing what the gauge is and doing at least 10 more stitches. Really the bigger the swatch that you have yarn for the better because that gives you a nice perspective of like what your fabric's gonna look like. So I cast on 26 stitches and then as you can see, I've already started it. And there's these yarns that are behind it because I'm essentially just sort of carrying them along to kind of mimic swatching the round. Essentially, I'm not knitting and then purling because that's not how it is in the pattern in the round. I just need to be knitting and knitting. And so for the swatch, I just need to keep knitting and not purl. So here's, I've just finished row and what I, I just finished row and what I did is I slid it over and then I grab my yarn and I just kind of hold it in back and I personally try to make it like a little bit loose so it's not tight and then I knit across. I actually really love swatching. It's just, it's part of the anticipation of knitting your sweater and making something that you or somebody else is going to love that's handmade. And I love knowing that the fabric I'm gonna produce and the effort that I'm gonna put into this sweater is gonna be something that I'm gonna like. For the love note, some of the times when I've made swatches, it's turned out a little bit too gauzy or holy for my liking, and so then I will size down a needle. I'm already, if you notice, my needles might look smaller than yours because I'm an exceptionally loose knitter, so I just thought I'd share that. If you're wondering why my needles might look smaller than the needles you're using, I'm a very loose knitter. So pretty much I always start off with a smaller, at least two sizes smaller than whatever a pattern suggests. All right, so here I've reached the end of the row. Name this last switch stitch. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm using, as you can see my circulars, I'm just gonna slide it down to the other side. And then again, just, oops. <laughs> bring this yarn across here and start again. All right, I've placed this 
gauge ruler. You can use any ruler. You can see there's four inches across. The other thing that's nice is it has 10 centimeters across here too, because four inches and 10 centimeters are not precisely the same. And the different patterns will say different things. So four inches is typical in a lot of US American patterns. Okay, this is a little wobbly because I'm using my iPhone because I was having trouble focusing on the other camera. So I purposely picked some gauge watches that don't turn out to be perfectly on gauge. So the pattern for stitch gauge asks for 16 stitches and four inches. So let's count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen stitches instead of sixteen. So I'm gonna be a teacher here and ask you: Do you think the garment would be too small or too big? So there's fifteen stitches in four inches. Do you think it would be too small or too big? Sometimes people think the garment will be too small because, well, 15 smaller than 16 stitches and we were supposed to get 16 stitches, but that's actually not the case. If 15 stitches fit inside of your four inches instead of 16 stitches, that means your stitches are bigger than they should be. And so when you're knitting 16 stitches, it will be more than four inches. So the point is to knit 16 stitches and get four inches, but you're knitting 15 and getting four inches. So if you knit 16, it's gonna be more than that. So what that means is you're, if you get 15 stitches in these four inches, that means you're, every four inches, you are one stitch off. Now for a garment like this, that has a lot of positive ease. That may not bother you. You actually may be like, oh, okay, that'll work. Maybe you pick a smaller size than you would normally, like the medium instead of the large, and that'll work out if you were on the fence. It would actually maybe give you a size. You could do some math and figure out if it was a size in between. Okay, so let's get this lined up again. Okay, this was one of my first gauge swatches, and I think it was a little looser than I liked. So let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay, so seventeen stitches fit in the four inches. We we're supposed to get sixteen stitches. So do you think the garment would be bigger or smaller than it's supposed to be? It would be smaller because now when you knit 16 stitches, it's not quite four inches yet. And so what I meant by this one was too loose, I just meant like this fabric was too holy for me. But that's a matter of personal preference. You may like this. So that's sort of the interesting part about gauge swatching is deciding what you want to do, what kind of fabric you want, and so what will happen is after I do this, I've already gone through my size and marked whether it's medium or large, but what I will do then is maybe make adjustments. Maybe this is the, maybe I like this fabric and the gauge, the stitch gauge is off. So do some math and maybe decide to knit the size large. And so that's why I think it's really important to gauge swap. So you are in control of your fabric and your size.